on to the Jets' life. Question, is it better to lease your truck new or old or to buy it or to buy it out? I wouldn't do a lease. Period. End of story. New or old. I don't want to lease no truck, right? Now, when I say that, you got to understand the background that I'm coming from, okay? I, I stay intrastate. I don't go out of the state. I'm not OTR. So I guess what I'm saying is maybe a person that's going OTR across the country, all 48, you may be looking at having to have a more expensive truck, which means you might have to look at leasing something. I ain't, I don't want to lease. I want to own my truck and I want to have full control over where my over where my truck goes, right? And I don't want when I do lease, I don't want to lease from the company that I'm going to be running through. Like I don't, I don't do that world. I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't know that world at all. I have a truck that I pay cash for. Um, I run 450 miles a day, every single day. So it's not a piece of crap. It's not like it, it's not getting me around. You get what I'm saying? And 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 I own the truck, period, in the story. That's a simple way. Like, just keep it simple. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's an 07, by the way. It's not a brand new truck, okay? Apache native, got 25 doors in two years. But I just bought this Zoom PodTrack P4. It's an audio recording device. Essentially, I run my mic into this recorder and run this recorder into the um into my computer and what it allows me to do is um use a sound pad in the middle of this recording so i can put in sound effects like a gunshot or like a bomb or whatever and i was trying to hook it up before i got on today so that when somebody dropped the bomb hit me with a drop the mic moment i can hit them with the gun bah! <laughs> and um where, where's that coming at just now that would have got one <laughs> that would have got one <laughs> apache native got 25 doors in two years bah! that would have got a gunshot right there my man i love it i love it i've said it before to me in my opinion one of the first things that you need to be looking at doing when you get in trucking is putting yourself in position that you don't need to be here that don't mean you're gonna leave I love trucking. It's a great way to, to make money. It really is. I don't mean you going nowhere, but that just means that, and my, generally speaking, it's the people that need it to happen that always lose in negotiations. If you're needy in trucking as an owner operator, you're going to be abused by everybody. If you're needy as a company driver, when you first come into industry, you're setting yourself up to be abused by everyone. So you want, in my opinion, you want to put yourself in the position as quick as possible to get that, to get those dollar signs out of your eyes because the whole industry sees them. Okay. And as soon as you get yourself to the point where you don't need it, you got a different swag. You got a different way of doing things. You got a different way of doing business. You can afford to park your truck. If rates go in the dump, and, and I won't even say that. You can afford to park your truck if you don't want to run it for whatever reason. I'm tired. I don't want to get up. Rates are no good. That guy over there don't know how to talk to me no more. Whatever it may be. It goes back to that big C word, control. That's what it is right there. Like, that's it right there. Like, like not having to take sugar honey iced tea from nobody. Going back to Montana's question, that is what I enjoy about being an owner-operator the most. So, Apache Native, get another gunshot. Bah! Chris Hopkins, are you going on strike on the 31st? That's the word on the streets. Nope. I ain't heard nothing about a strike, man. I hear about them every now and then. Um, I asked my brother that same question. My brother's an owner operator for 30 years. I've said that before. I asked him that same question last year when drivers went on a strike. He was like, man, I ain't never, I, I ain't doing that. Carlos Aguirre, my friend, good morning. Greetings from Ecuador, South America. Yo, let me take a few minutes to do this real quick. Yeah, I want to shout out my international audience. <laughs> I don't have it right here in front of me, but Ecuador is in the house. Shout outs to Ecuador. Um, Trinidad in the house. Um, where else? I can't even think of none of the foreign places. Mexico, Canada, other places down in South America. Australia is checking us out. Um, I can't think right now of any of the other international audience that, that that gives me props on this channel, but kudos to you guys, man. Appreciate you being here. Ty Mary, I'm working on getting my CDL based on the info that you share. When I start driving, I may not get the routes and or pay. I would like right away having three kids, five and under. What route do you think I should go? Let me make sure I understand your, or, or do the best to understand your question, Ty. I'm working on getting my CDL based on the info that you share. When I start driving, I may not get the routes and or pay I would like right away. Having three kids, five and under, what route do you think I should go? What are your options, Ty Murray? 
I mean, like, what are your options? Like, that's a vague question. Like, what route do you think I should go? In my opinion, just right off the top of my head, you know, I got young children. That's the reason why I won't go OTR because I have young children. You know what I mean? So if you plan on going OTR with three kids, five and under, that's a different, you know what I mean? Like, like, let me know, like, what's your options? Let me, what's your options? Ty Mary, owner, operator, or stick with the company. You already did. You already did. Um, depends on how, it depends, man. It depends. There's nothing wrong with sticking with a company. There's nothing wrong with not branching out to become an owner operator. It's nothing wrong with not doing that. I mean, if you, if you feel like you got the, the cojones for it, if you feel like you can, you can pull it off fine. But if you put in your family and your, and your, and your, and your, you know what I mean? Your, your personal financial situation with your family, if you're putting that in jeopardy to go out on a branch and, and start on your own, I, 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 I can't, I, I don't know. I, I don't feel comfortable even telling you which way you should go. I just don't know enough about your situation. How's your money situation, right? If money is tight, you know what I mean? It's a sink or swim type of situation. If you was on your own, I say, go for it. If you got family, if you got people to support, if you're the sole provider in your household, all of that, you got to take all of that into account. You know what I mean? You really do. So I, I can't really, I need to know more to talk on that more. I really do. Okay. All right, boom. Let me go through some of these comments that's on this video. Let me get to this. And again, as I'm discussing these comments, if you guys got anything on them, just uh, just put your just put your response in the chat, right? So let me see if, what which ones I can find. Brad Blunt. I'm gonna check these off as I'm going through it. See if you don't invest and don't do nothing with your money, then of course it wouldn't sound a lot. It wouldn't sound like a lot. Correct investments, living below your means. It's still a lot. Also, wouldn't you be able to claim your gas and get that back at the end of the year? I can't quite understand this. I'm working with it. Like I said, it's all about the person and how they use their money. This breakdown is a little flawed. Okay, cool. Let's talk about it. Brad Blunt, Blunt, let me read it again. I love these types of comments because we can dig into it a little bit. See, if you don't invest and don't do nothing with your money, then of course it wouldn't sound like a lot. I think that's what he's saying. That's my point. That was the point that I was making in that video. Correct investments, living below your means, is still a lot. Okay, so I, I, I'm not 100% sure what he's saying, but I think I know what he's saying. And that is the point that I was making in that video. $200,000 as an owner-operator is not a lot of money. What that means is you need to be smart with that money. And I would agree with what he's saying right here. If you just be foolish with your money, if, you don't, if your only source of bringing in money is, is you driving that truck, and you're not investing in other ways to be able to make money other than you driving that truck. Only thing you're spending your trucking income and profits on is your mortgage, right? Or your car payment or your cable bill or your that personal stuff. Then you're 100% right, 200,000. Like you're always still gonna be living paycheck to paycheck as an owner operator, okay? But if you're wise with your money and you do the right things with it, Apache Native brought up some things that we can do with our money and you give it some time. You give it two to five years of making two, 250 as an owner operator and you're doing the right thing with your money year in and year out. After a few years, and Apache Native said that actually, after a few years, then what you've been investing in, investing is planting seeds. And after you plant seeds, they begin, they begin to grow. So I actually would agree, um, Brad Blunt is saying that the video, the breakdown is a little flawed, but I, I mean, I'm, I don't see how. It is all about the individual and how they use their money. The, the, again, the takeaway that the viewer should have gotten from that video is when I go on an operator, I got to be smart with my money because chances are I'm not going to make enough to get rich in the first two years, three years, or five years. I got to be smart with the money that I make. That was the whole point of that video. So, um, yeah, you got to be smart with your you got to be smart with your money. R. Marez, let's go to another comment. I was thinking about going the lease route so I wouldn't have to worry about maintenance since it would be included. I need more info on that though. Again, I don't, I wouldn't, you know what I mean? I don't go on the maintenance route, or excuse me, on the lease route because it's a whole, it's a whole different world of expenses. I, I mean, I'm one of those guys in my personal life. I'd rather just pay for it. I'd rather just pay cash for it. I don't like, I think that's a, that's a, I think that's, I think that's a, I, you could say that's a pretty consistent trait. That's a, been a consistent trait with most of the entrepreneurs that I've dealt with in my life. They're either paying cash 
or if they are financing, they're paying something off extremely quick. And if they are financing, a lot of the times they're only financing something that will make them more money. A lot of the times we're financing things that don't make us more money. But if your finance is something that makes you more money, that's 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 the thing. But I'm one of those guys in my personal life. I'd rather just pay cash and uh, and be done with it. Hundred percent, right? Flip over. I saw a couple of comments come up here. Nico, the first gen trucker. Keep them videos coming. It's much appreciated, my brother. Hundred percent, Nico. Give me a like if you haven't already, big bro. David Martin, if you find the right company that gives you what you're looking for, typically small to medium companies treat drivers better. I've heard the exact same thing, um, David Martin, myself. Go, go. Hey, what's a good way to set up for 401k retirement for an owner operator? So, so, um, so when you say you don't mean 401k, you mean what's a good way to set up your retirement accounts? Again, that's a personal thing, man. You know what I mean? Like my, my investment choice, my um risk-free retirement is through life insurance i invest in indexed life insurance so you know what i mean but but you know i had to get educated for a long time on that before i felt comfortable putting my savings or before i felt comfortable starting one of those policies and investing in one okay um but that's 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 what i go with i don't like dealing with financial products that i don't understand and that is a product, the indexed um, universal life policies. That's a product that it took me a while to understand it. But once I understood the benefits of it, once I understood the low risk of it, once I understood it, I'm like, hey, I don't, this is where I want to stick my money at. Right. So, um, and also, you know, so, so, so for me, it's, it looks like invest, invest in your business, invest your profits in your business. Invest your profits in things that make you money. And those things that make you money, I want to put that money away on a long-term basis. And that money, for me, goes into indexed universal life policies. So I don't know if that helps you out or not, but that is my um, um, uh, financial tool of choice. All right. David Martin says the amount of money a person needs to make is based upon the lifestyle you want to live. I would agree. Me as a man, as an entrepreneur for my whole life, I already know how to how to how to not live on a little or on a lot. I already know how to do that. You know what I mean? A lot of people that have been company drivers or they've been working for people their whole life, you guys are used to splurging. You guys are used to getting your check and saying, This check is mine. This whole thing is mine. Not all of you guys, obviously, but there are those that, that as an employee that get their check and the check is gone before the next payday comes up. That's bad spending habits. You say, no, nah, that's because I don't make enough. No, that's bad spending habits. That's exactly what it is. That's the point of me making that video, 200,000 ain't much as an owner operator. Because if you think your, your problem is you ain't making enough, you're going to be chasing dollars. You're going to be chasing, you're going to be chasing around a dollar. And then when you go on an operator, it's like, damn, this still ain't no money. The problem is not how much is coming in. The problem is your economy. The problem is your economics, right? So it's, it is what you do with a dollar, 100%. Jacques Retro, how hard is the learning curve going from driving a Metro bus, articulated bus to a tractor trailer? Jacques Retro, I really appreciate your question, but how in the hell would I know the answer to that? I ain't never drove a bus, big bro. <laughs> I wouldn't know that learning curve. I would assume my, my, my first answer right off the top, because I want to give you something. I appreciate you putting the question in the chat, but it's going to be a learning curve. I don't care where you come from in trucking. It's going to be a learning curve. And one of the reasons it's going to be a learning curve is because it's more to drive. It's more to trucking than just driving the truck, and I know it's more to driving a bus than just driving the bus as well. I know that, and you probably know that as well. But it's more to driving a truck than just driving the truck. So I can't say how steep the learning curve will be for you because I don't know your background. Don't know if you drove bus for a year, two years, or thirty years. I'm not sure. All of that's relevant. You get what I'm saying? But I would say it's going to be a learning curve. Yeah, definitely, because there is a lot more to driving a truck than um than just driving the truck. Hundred percent. I hope that helped you out somewhat, man. Apache native. Going OTR, making 250, 250,000. If you stay local and make 150,000, you end up with same. Got to be smart. I would agree. I would totally agree with you. Chris Hopkins, what has been the, what has been the biggest expenses that you didn't see coming? <laughs> Excuse me. Biggest expenses I didn't see coming, Chris Hopkins, was overweight and out of state. <laughs> That's the biggest expense that I didn't see coming. 
being overweight and out of state. And if you didn't see that video, that is the title of it. Overweight and out of state. They hit me with a ticket, $1,750. So that was the biggest expense that um that I've had right now that I that's like, damn, you know what I mean? Ty Murray, it's a it's a it's kind of a sink or swim, but fam and I are willing to take sacrifices. I just know starting out, I may get stuck doing OTR. That said, will it be best doing OTR as owner op or with company? I, I would say it's definitely going to be best doing, and in my opinion, it's going to definitely be best doing OTR as an owner op. OTR as a company, you go where they say go, and you come back when they say come back. Owner operator as an OTR, you go and you come back when you want to, and you go back out when you want to. It's, the, it's a control piece. It's back to that control piece, right? I don't need nobody to tell. I don't want anybody to be able to tell me you can't come home. What? Oh my gosh. You just lost me right there. <laughs> and as a company driver, like it's like that's that's liable to happen. You know what I'm saying? That's liable to happen. Now, the company treating you bad is just that when you work for somebody else, you work for them. You're on their time. You know what I mean? So, it, yeah, if you go on OTR, I would say you're going to be, you're going to be, you, uh, I would be happier as an owner operator. Now, that being said, I want to say something else about your comment. You said it's kind of sink or swim, but fam and I are willing to take sacrifices. I just know starting out, I may get stuck doing OTR. So, keep, so, so are you saying that you're looking at just going out? And you're deciding whether to, uh, you're new, but you're deciding whether to be owner operator or company. It sounds like you might be saying that. You say, I know I may get stuck. Uh, um, I just know starting out, I may get stuck doing OTR. So if you're just starting out, I would recommend that you work for somebody first before you go owner operator. Now, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, you know what I mean? If I'm not understanding what you're saying, feel free to straighten me out. But yeah, I would say if it's a choice between going um, OTR, as a company or as an owner operator, you go, I would be happier as an owner operator. But if I was new and just getting started using your words, I don't think I would want to go owner operator. I, you know what I mean? And I'm guessing you probably got your money right already, but I don't, I wouldn't, I would want to learn on somebody else's dime. I would want to make mistakes on somebody else's dime. I would want to find out where the, where the good paying places, where the, where the good paying freight is and is going. I'd want to learn all that stuff as a, as a company driver. I'd want to find out where the cheaper fuel prices are in the country as a, as a company driver, right? I'm getting sent here, I'm getting sent there. And I notice when I go here, fuel prices are higher or lower. Or I notice when I go here, my company can't never find no freight coming out of there or freight coming out of there. It doesn't really pay that much. I'd want to find out all of that stuff as a company driver. Um, you're gonna have to learn that stuff when you go on an operator only difference is when you go on an operator you know what i mean you, you're playing with your own zeros at that point so hope that helps you out somewhat all right maurice bay the helpful trucker here for more helpful cdl tips go here or consider subscribing to my youtube channel right here it could have been anywhere else in the world but instead you chose to be here with me and i really appreciate that